Hi folks, in today's episode, I'm going to walk you through the most top topic on the AI landscape is uh, OpenAI's O1 model. So to start with, uh, there's a fundamental difference in how GPT models work. So if you look at GPT models, are uh, they are text generation models. They are trained on an architecture called Transformer. Uh, and there's a wonderful paper you could read more about if you want to learn more about what Transformer models are and how GPT is kind of, you know, the amazing power it has is based on the paper called Attention is All You Need. What it does is that whenever you give a prompt to uh, to the GPT or, or LLM, it tries to understand, uh, gives a self-attention to the inputs that you are given and then try to understand, okay, what you are trying to perform a task or what is your request and then gives an answer. So let's say if I want to understand more about okay what's the multiplication of two large numbers and it gives me an answer for that or if i want to basically kind of ask okay can you um, review this particular paragraph of text and it gives me uh, kind of you no know, observation if there's any grammatical mistake do i need to add more uh, like you know adverb adjectives and, 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 and things like that come back now openai recently launched a new model called o1 there are two versions of O1 model. One is O1 Preview, and another is O1 Mini. O1 Mini is not in Preview, but O1 Preview is you can try if you have a ChatGPT uh, plus subscription, you can try it uh, today with that. Now, what's so interesting about this model, or the code name Strawberry uh, uh, for this model, is that you might have seen a lot of people asking question to ChatGPT that okay, how many hours are there in a strawberry? Correct. Uh, so clearly, and, and model kind of you know, gives you surprising result out of it because it isn't kind of you not know, trained to do a reasoning task, correct? Uh, and and that was kind of you know, really really uh, uh, interesting and and many were embarrassing for OpenAI. So they kind of you know, come up with it. How do we make our models, which are uh, which can do at least a basic level of reasoning out of it, correct? And then the LLMs can be used for a variety of tasks. Now, to do reasoning, it's a for us, it is a natural because we have studied, uh, you know, in our education. But imagine teaching an AI to do reason, it's a completely different way of it. Uh, so to do that, there is a new architecture or new approach to training your model. It's called chain of thought modeling. So chain of thought was a, a approach that Google research team uh, started first. Uh, it was paper published in 2022. And uh, it basically kind of you know, highlights, okay, what is a standard prompting technique look like? So I just explained it, okay, imagine that, you know, you want to say that, okay, Soham has a five tennis ball. And like, you know, he buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each has a three tennis balls. How many tennis balls Soham has? So you get an answer of 11, which is kind of, you no. Know, uh, straightforward so this is how you get in information but in chain of thought prompting what does uh, a model is try to kind of you know break down your prompt into a subtask or a smaller task which it can reason with and and because of it kind of you no know, breakings down and perform this isolated uh, uh, independent small task the accuracy and performance of that uh, uh, answer would be kind of you know, much higher so, so that's a fundamental difference between them. Uh, and, and Google published some of its results on Palm and, and, and some of the other Lambda uh, uh, LLM kind of you know, uh, family of products there. So, so this is a paper, really interesting paper. I highly encourage you to kind of you know, go ahead and have a look at it. If you want to know more about it, uh, I believe uh, this is the paper that they kind of you know, published. Uh, and they have also given some interesting results on how you can imp implement this on your... So let's say if you're using any open source uh, uh, version of LLM and you want to kind of you know, uh, integrate chain of thought prompting in your thing, there is enough and more information out there. But mind you, it takes a lot of infrastructure to be able to do that. While there are a lot of benefits in terms of accuracy, performance and all, uh, the, the downside of chain of thought modeling is that it takes more time because it's thinking, correct? It, it is not jumping to answer uh, to your prompt, but it's kind of, it, it understands what you're trying to ask, breaks them down, does individual competitions, 
and then combines it and gives you the final answer out of it. Uh, let's look at what uh, OpenAI team had to kind of you know, uh, share this. So this was the press release that it did on September 12, <coughs> around two weeks back. And uh, so this is what they are basically talking about, correct? They are using reinforcement learning to perform this chain of thought uh, prompting process. And what it's trying to do is that it is, let's say if I give a particular prompt, it's trying to kind of you know, understand that prompt and every single time it kind of you know, reinforces uh, uh, what a particular task has been given to. So it breaks down and then, okay, so take an example of, let's say I want the same example of how many hours are there in strawberry, correct? So what it tries to do is understand, okay, what, what is the task here? I want to, I need to count a particular alphabet in a word. So that's kind of you know, task one. Then it kind of, okay, what is that alphabet? Uh, the alphabet is R. And what is a word? Word is a strawberry, correct? So that's the second level of that. The third one is it now it iterates strawberry and kind of you know, finds out, okay, which all the positions uh, a particular occurrence of an alphabet is there. And then at the end of the day, it gives you an answer. Uh, it counts the number of occurrences and gives you an answer. So, so how does it do it? Basically using reinforcement learning algorithm and every time it kind of you know, uh, makes a mistake, it learns from it and, and, and gives you uh, hopefully give you a better answer there. The other way to interpret is that if you have more data, correct, and you are trying to do a, a reasoning task for it, a chain of thought can give you much more uh, uh, predictable answers in that case. Out there. So uh, without further ado, here are some of the evaluation that they've done and they're saying that chain of thought reasoning is a good for a task for let's say performing a mathematical task that if you want to do it right. or if you want to do uh, uh, coding, like, you know, we have all seen chat GPT and, and other LLMs doing a basic code generation out of it, but now it can be more interactive. Uh, it can understand your uh, a prompt much better and give you a much uh, a closer kind of, you no know, examples of uh, code that you want to generate out of it. It can also perform much better on science-based prompts that you're asking out of it. These are some of the evaluations. So here, uh, uh, O1 is kind of evaluated on a math competition, Olympiad out of it. Uh, this one is like, you know, uh, code generation on code forces. And the last one is on PhD level science questions and, and its performance compared to other models on there. Uh, what I like about it is that they have also given an, an, an examples of it. So let's say this one is like a, an example of a cipher where it gives a, a sort of a cipher code and it gives an answer that, okay, the for this particular cipher, the answer is think st step by step. Now use the above example and, and give me an answer for this particular cipher. Now this was done on uh, GPT 4.0 and this one is an O1 preview. So if you go down, it's also tried to kind of know, uh, breaks down task, but the answer what it kind of know, gives you is after a point in time, it just gives up, correct? Right. Uh, but in case of O1, uh, it, it gives you a complete understanding of, okay, what is the first word, this one? What are the pairs? What are the decoded letters? What is the second word? So it kind of, you know, imagine like, you know, how you do a think aloud while you solve a problem, correct? Yeah. So it kind of, you know, thinking aloud and giving you, okay, this is what I'm, how I'm performing a calculation. This is how I'm understanding the particular prompt. And at the end, it gives a final answer, which is there are three R's in a strawberry. Uh, coding also, like, you know, it can write a bash script, uh, which can give an answer. And there are a variety of other uh, fields uh, on which they have, explored performance of O1 being much, much better on the compared to a predecessor one. But I'll not, I'll spare you with all the details and we'll jump into the actual uh, demo of ChatGPT. So if you have a ChatGPT uh, Plus, you can actually move between the different uh, models. I've selected O1 Preview. You can also select O1 Mini depending on uh, your preferences. Uh, let's say, let's start with the first one is uh, how many hours are in strawberry and you see here it kind of you know, gives you um, a kind of you know, prompt saying it's a thinking and it took a five second to kind of you know, uh, uh, 
I give a reply to uh, this particular prompt. Uh, and he said, I'm telling the occurrences of R in a word strawberry. By example, each letter one by one and noting their positions. And there are three letters uh, of R in the word strawberry. And this could be any uh, uh, letter. So let's say how many M's are there in, a, in Malia Lab. Correct. So there are two letters of M, correct? And you can say how it is thinking and how it's kind of you know, performing. Now, these are very simple kind of you know, task there. What about kind of you know, we up and a bit of an enter there and see uh, 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 something else as well. So I always kind of you know, fascinated by a math because math is a, a pretty interesting field. It requires a, a, some bit of a thinking uh, calculations and and computers are really best suited for performing large complex computations. Uh, so let's see if chat GPT or O1 model can uh, perform that. So one of the prompt that I came across when I was learning more about O1 uh, is on calculating first or last digit of prime numbers and see what happens at what is the last four uh, numbers of uh, of first 70 prime number additions correct uh, let's let's wait for it to kind of know uh, give us the final answer but my assumption is that yes 0887 uh, so that seems to be correct yes. this is the total uh, kind of no addition of all of this prime numbers uh, which are n and then kind of the last four digit is basically this one out here. So super interesting. Uh, and what previously, if you if you try to do something like this in uh, in previous version of model, uh, the two things could happen. A, you won't get a chain of thought. Uh, and in the case when you get a chain of thought, it kind of, you know, uh, after a point in time it gives us, maybe it reaches the token, input token limit or output token limit. The other thing about O1 is that the the token limit has increased significantly. It used to be 8,000 uh, tokens before, but now it is kind of, you know, I think 128K if I'm not wrong. Uh, so which is kind of a massive number of tokens you can kind of, you know, given and, and from that input prompt, it can break it down and kind of you know, give you a really uh, interesting answers there. The last one is one of my favorite and I'm going to uh, see if I can find that so it was on Reddit I have come across. So this is a prompt which basically says that Peter has a five candle that are all the same length and he lights them all at the same time. And after a while he blows out the candles one after another one. Which of the five candle was the first one he has blown out? And, and, and here is a figure of the five candles after they have been blown out. So what LLM has to do is that it has to understand my prompt and then it has to look at the additional information or supplementary information that has been given in terms of the, the length of the candles and then kind of figure out okay which one is the right answer. If you look at here, the three is an answer yeah. because that that must have been kind of blown out first by, by Peter. Oh, wonderful. So candle three is the longest one. So, so now you can understand what it is doing correct i think i again want to summarize that some of the things that we're trying to do with o1 model or what chat gpt wants the user to do is that you can have a complex prompt correct which kind of you know uh, uh, does a really complex computation but at the same time you can reason with it you can go back and you can try to uh, get a peep into how the O1 model is thinking. But the other thing is that it does not always give you uh, uh, this, this view into things. Sometimes you might see that the chain of thought is hidden for, uh, uh, and this is predominantly in two reasons, an area where the safety of kind of you know, AI and the users and everything is, is, is also important. So if you ask a prompt which is controversial or which is not abiding by the policies and all, uh, mm -hmm. You may not kind of you know, get the, the chain of thought reasoning because these are like, you know, a, a model which is still in development. 
uh, and it doesn't want to kind of you know give a wrong information out there. So in, in some of those cases, you may not get the chain of thought reasoning. The second thing is also they have been kind of you no, know, uh, and this model is not open source by the way, and and they want to kind of you know, protect their IP and, and 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 information of. They don't want other models to be able to kind of you know, train on what. Uh, the chain of thought been kind of you know, given by O and preview out of it. So in some cases you would you may not find that, uh, but in, in in usual cases you will really uh, you should be able to kind of forget the chain of thought there. Chain of thought is not just only in O one. By the way, you can also try it in in Gemini Pro one point five and some and I think Claude three point five as well. Uh, but this is this is super interesting uh, if you are exploring use cases around math, coding, or even science. Based prompting, I think this should really, really give you uh, some interesting answers there. I heard about somebody, like a PhD student, if I understand correctly, who tried O one, and uh, his PhD in as part of his work, he requires to come up with a hypothesis and then uh, create an experiment to test his hypothesis. So apparently, O one created yeah. uh, was able to create an experiment which was not only as good as uh, the Kind of output of his research over years, but was also able to think of new parameters that he hadn't thought of, um, and it took a couple of prompts. It took a couple of back and forths. So that's really blowing people's mind. So I think my question to you, Dushant, is: Is this going in the direction of AGI? Are we there? Are we there yet? When you look at the kind of you know, progress, uh, the OpenAI and all the other LLM like you know vendors have have been able to do in the last few years, is phenomenal. Uh, it's certainly a path forward, I would say. But when you look at AGI, from my perspective, I think it's much more than this. Right? Uh, I think there was an interesting uh, post by Hugging Face CEO. Yeah. He said it is it is wrong for us to assume that. Machines are thinking like how humans are thinking. Correct. Right. It's certainly chain of thought is a phenomenal technique uh, in terms of understanding context. How do you derive context from the prompts and and be able to kind of you know uh, think along with uh, uh, users and and achieve the particular task. But AGI is a very different, very separate uh, discussion altogether. But that's just my personal opinion. Uh, Having said that, I think this is definitely a step forward in terms of how AI has been kind of you know transforming, uh, like you know across industry out of it, um, and it's an it's an exciting discovery. I had a interesting observation. So while you were doing this, right, like I was just trying to play with Claude and just see, right, like what does Claude think about this, right? So let me just share my screen. So I asked Claude the same question, right? What is the, what are the last four digits of the sum of the first 70 prime numbers, right? So it's very interesting. So it kind of broke down the problems, the problem in the right way, right? The first 70 prime numbers, we'll sum these numbers, then we'll extract the last digits of the sum, right? Got the steps correct. From what I understand, uh, Sonnet 3.5 is the model I'm using. It doesn't have this uh, chain of thought right okay so it got some of it correct it actually identified the the numbers the 70 prime numbers correctly okay but this is where it failed right somehow uh, the sum of these 70 prime numbers it just couldn't do which is very strange right because mm-hmm. i have been using claude like very aggressively and uh, effectively and it's done a lot of math really well for me and so it says the uh, you know sum is seven three one five six, which is incorrect. Yours your number was correct, and the last four digits are three one five six, which is very strange, right? It it fails in this step. It's identified the first step correctly. The second step is a failure. Third step is actually correct, assuming that the the second step was correct, right? So very uh, strange, right? And then I ask it, is the sum correct? Can you check, right? It apologizes, which it always does. And then gives a like completely random like a sum, it's a hallucinated sum, gives a hallucinated, you know, a last four digits. I just ask it point blank: Are you actually adding these <laughs> so, numbers? So are you just being mean to the machine now? So it's just like you know you're right to be skeptical, right? It's just no. Yeah. Right? And then what I do is I just take these numbers, I just copy it and just paste it over here, right? Can you add these numbers, right? And it gives the right answer, right? Which is absolutely correct. Right, so it's a four digits, a zero eight eight seven. 
right? Which is very strange, right? So there's something which is going wrong, which I think one is getting right. I guess all these models are very smart and there's some uh, probably chain of thought that's missing, right? Like, even though I asked it to add in, it's capable of addition. It's just not able to do that as a series of steps, right? Uh, Dushan, do you want to try the same question on 4.0? Yeah, I can. So I'm going to 4.0. Uh, yeah. Yes. This is 4.0. I'm just copy-pasting, being lazy here. So here I got a correct answer. Okay. 0887. Can you start a new chat, uh, Dishant? What happens? It carries forward the results. It's on the I top. Did. Yeah. Okay. This was a different one. <laughs> I think I clicked a prompt by default there and I stopped it. Uh, but let me just write this one. Okay. Cool. Turns out chat GPT is just better at math. Yes. So, so let's say if you want to kind of know, if you want to say, okay, how many A's in the world? Correct. Oh, this okay. is, yeah. So, it seems kind of no. Uh, this has no just point of, gotten better. Thanks to Shant for such an amazing, you know, uh, conversation.